it's up there. somebody gives me a gift, right? If you're happy, you could give a thumbs up. But what if you open the gift and it's a pair of socks instead of a toy that you really wanted? That would make me feel kind of sad. We could give a thumbs down for being sad for that. Maybe you feel kind of happy when there's a snow day and you get an extra day off school. But right now, you might be feeling kind of sad because you've had lots of days off school and you can't see your teacher and you can't see your friends. You know, when I was a little girl, 
when my mom would buy cereal, there used to be toys hidden in the cereal. It would have a special surprise. And I was so happy when she bought cereal that had a toy inside it. And I would wake up early in the morning so that I could open that box of cereal and that I could get the toy out. But guess what? Sometimes I found out that my sisters or my brother beat me to the box of cereal and they got the toy before I did. And then I felt sad. So sometimes things make us feel happy and sometimes they make us feel sad. Maybe mom and dad told you that you could have a snack and that made you feel really happy. And so you went into the pantry or into the cupboard to get yourself a cookie or a special treat. And when you got in there, you saw that it was all gone. And that can make us really sad too, right? So a lot of things that can make us feel happy can also make us feel sad when things don't go just the way that we hoped that they would go. And so then we have to ask the question, well, how is it that we can live a happy life? Should we smile more? Should we whistle a little bit? Should we be a happy person by getting more stuff? Or can we be happy when we get our own way? Well, Jesus knew that life doesn't always go our way. And he knew that we get sick and we get hurt and we get disappointed. Whoops, there goes my present. And Jesus knew that happiness came from something else. Happiness doesn't come from things in life, and he didn't want them to because we can't depend on things. And we even can't depend on people to be the ones to make us happy. So Jesus wanted us to know that there's a better way to happiness. And that even when we're feeling sad because things don't go our way, Jesus says that we can still be happy inside. So one day, Jesus saw that there was a very large crowd that was following him, and he thought, hmm, this would be a great time to teach the people about what real happiness is. And so Jesus climbed up the side of a mountain, and he climbed up that mountain, and he sat down, and he began to teach them. And he went on the mountain so that the whole large crowd of people could see and hear everything that he had to say to them that day. And what Jesus was about to tell them he wants us to know, too. His words are for us. Well, Jesus was about to turn everything upside down during his message on the mountain because he was going to say that the kinds of people that we think should be sad or people that we might think are unfortunate or they have bad luck or maybe people we think that they should be pitied because of the bad things in their life, Jesus said that they're actually blessed. And Jesus said that we can be blessed too. Wait, what does that mean? What does it mean to be blessed? Do we mean like when we say, God bless you? Well, it's a little bit like that, boys and girls. To be blessed is to have a special blessing or a joy or a happiness that comes from God. And it's a happiness and a joy that's inside of us instead of on the outside. The kind of blessing or happiness that God gives us isn't the kind of happiness that we usually feel because the happiness that God gives is happiness inside, no matter what's happening on the outside. No matter if the present wasn't what you wanted, no matter if your piggy bank is empty or if all the cookies are gone, the kind of happiness Jesus gives us is in our hearts. So Jesus was going to teach his friends about this happiness, and he was going to teach them about some attitudes that they could have that could help them to have blessing or happiness. And we call these the B attitudes. Could you say that with me? The B attitudes. Sometimes we say they're the B like Jesus attitudes. These, are the, these attitudes are the way that we should be so that we can have blessing or we can have the happiness that comes from God. So when Jesus began to teach the crowd as he sat on the mountain that day, the very first thing that Jesus said to them was, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Or we might say, Happy are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, when we think about being poor, we might think about someone that doesn't have a lot of money. We might think that poor means that someone doesn't have enough to eat or that they don't have a nice home or they don't have nice clothes or maybe they don't even have enough clothes. But that wasn't the kind of poor that Jesus was talking about that brings us happiness and blessing. He was talking about being poor in spirit. That means that we're poor on the inside. 
It's knowing that we have nothing without Jesus. It's realizing that we need Jesus in our life. And without Jesus, we are lost and we are empty. And so Jesus said that we have to admit that we need him. And the kingdom of heaven will be ours. The kingdom of heaven is all the gifts that God has to give us. Right? The things that belong to God, he says, we can have when we admit that we need him in our life. Hmm. Boys and girls, I'm not really sure if I'm explaining this very well to you this morning. So I've invited a special friend who's going to come and maybe he can help you to understand a little bit better what it means to be blessed because we are poor in spirit. And my friend's name is Douglas, and I hope that you'll like Douglas because I think that he's a whole lot of fun. And he's going to share this beat attitude with us today. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about the Beatitudes. Yeah, well, we're just going to focus on one specifically, but I did want to give I did want to give an explanation on what the Beatitudes are. Cuz see in the in the Bible in the book of Matthew, there's this section called the the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus took his disciples and he, and he preached a sermon to them. And there's this it, this section, actually it's the beginning section of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus says these eight different kinds of people that most folks would think were were, you know, really unfortunate. But Jesus says that they are blessed. And so in the first beatitude, the, the first blessing, the one we're going to be talking about today, Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now that idea of being poor in spirit, saying poor in spirit is not something that I usually, you know, sneak into my daily conversations. That's not something that I hear a lot. I feel like I've heard it in church, but I didn't really understand what they were saying. And one of the translations of the Bible, it says, Blessed are the spiritually needy. Instead of saying poor in spirit, they say spiritually needy, which is, you know, pretty much the same thing. But it kind of helps me to understand what Jesus was getting at a little bit here. Because see, in all of these Beatitudes, Jesus is pretty much talking about the real way to be happy. Because see, in, in these Beatitudes, he's talking about eight different kinds of people who seem unfortunate. They seem like they should be very unhappy. People that you would think are not very blessed. But Jesus says that that is the way to true happiness. Those people are blessed. Now for me, I, I really hate being needy. You know, I want to be self-sufficient. I heard somebody say that the other day. Self-sufficient. That's like a big word, but it means do things on your own. You don't need help from anybody. And I feel like a lot of people would say that that is a virtue. You know, that's something that is a very good, important thing to be, is self-sufficient, not needing help from anyone. You know, there was this one time, there was this carnival in town, and I don't know if you've ever seen a carnival, but they've got these big rides, you know, like a Ferris wheel, and they've got these games, you know, where you can win prizes. And uh, my friends and I, we were all going to go to this carnival, and I knew it was going to cost some money, but I had no idea how much money it was going to cost to do this carnival. Because not only do you have to pay to get into the carnival, but then you got to pay for every single ride. I don't know if all carnivals are this way, but but the carnival we went to was. So, you know, you had to pay to get in, which... It was more than I thought it was going to be. And, and all of the money that I brought to go spend at the carnival, I had to spend just to get in the door. And then once I was there, everything to do, all the fun stuff cost money. And I didn't have any more money. And so if I wanted to do any of this stuff with my friends, I needed them to pay for me, which was really embarrassing. I didn't want them to pay for me, but either they were going to pay for me to go on these rides with them, or I just wasn't going to get to go on any rides with them, or play any games, or really do any of the fun stuff at the carnival. Now, they were happy to help. But I still didn't like that feeling of needing somebody else, you know, that feeling of, of being needy. Now, the truth is that we are all spiritually needy, right? We all need God. But I think for a lot of people, that feeling of being needy, that feeling of needing someone else, you know, that feeling of being, you know, spiritually poor is uncomfortable. We don't like that feeling. We want to be able to do everything on our own. We want to be self-sufficient, but we all need God. And so if you aren't spiritually poor, if you aren't spiritually needy, if you aren't the poor in spirit, then you're trying to pretend that you don't need God. And that might make you feel a little bit better for a little while, but that's not the way to true happiness. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then the part where it says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, that's kind of tricky too, because when we're talking about the kingdom of heaven, we're not talking about like a castle that belongs to God. No, they're talking about like the the reign or the authority of God. So it would be a little bit like if my dad owned the carnival, right? 
You know, if my dad owned the carnival, it wouldn't matter if I didn't have any money. I could still go on all the rides. I could still play all the games because they'd be like, oh, that's the owner's kid. And so if we accept the fact that we are needy, that we are spiritually poor, if we recognize that fact and we accept that we need God, that's the path to true happiness. That's the kind of person who is blessed. So that's my challenge to you guys today is that you would recognize your spiritual neediness. Recognize that you are poor in spirit. Recognize that you need God. Because if you do, the whole world will open up to you. The path to true happiness is not by pretending that you've got it all together. Because when you truly accept that you need God, then yours is the kingdom of heaven. So boys and girls, to be poor in spirit means to recognize that we need God in our life. And that's exactly what Jesus wants from us and for us. And that's what he was telling his friends on the mountain that day. And that's what he's telling us. We don't have to pretend that we have it all together. Jesus wants us to admit that we're empty. Just like my sand timer, do you see how it's empty on top? When we come to Jesus and we say, I'm empty, I have nothing good to give, I need you in my life, then everything in our life gets turned upside down. And Jesus will begin to fill us up. He'll come and fill us up inside. And then we'll become rich in God. We'll be rich in happiness and rich in joy. And we'll be rich in hope. And we'll be able to have this great relationship with God our Father. And boys and girls, even when we make mistakes, big mistakes, and especially when we make mistakes, we should have an attitude of humility, an attitude of being poor in spirit and going to God and saying, God, I messed up and I need your help. I need your forgiveness, God. Well, boys and girls, there's a story in the Bible and it's in the book of Luke and it's about a boy. Well, he was a young man. He was a son. And he made some bad choices because he was looking for happiness in all the wrong places. But finally, he recognized his need. So I want to tell you that story, and it's the story of the prodigal son. So boys and girls, once there were two brothers, and the younger brother, he was not very happy. We don't really know why he wasn't very happy. Maybe he was bored from staying home all the time, or maybe he didn't like the food that there was to eat in his house. But for whatever reason that he was unhappy, he decided one day that he was going to leave home. And so he went to his dad one day and he said, Dad, I want my share of the money. The money that I would get after you die. I want it and I want it now. I don't want to wait until you die to have my inheritance. Now maybe he thought that that money was going to make him happy. But his request was really a selfish request, wasn't it? And so the father gave him the money. The father emptied out his bank account and he took half the money that he had and he gave it to the younger son. He knew that the money wasn't going to make the son happy, but the son had asked for the money. And so the father watched as the son left that day. And the son, he set out to see the world. He moved to a distant land and he went wherever he wanted and he did whatever he wanted and he did it whatever he wanted to, including lots of things that the son shouldn't have done. Now the son, he couldn't wait to spend all that money. He bought fancy clothes and he gave big parties and he had fun with anyone that he wanted to. He even made friends with some very bad people that weren't a good influence on him. He just, just did whatever he wanted to, whenever he wanted, whether it was right or wrong. And he was happy, and he was having fun, and he thought maybe it was the happiest that he had ever been. But then one day, all of a sudden, his money was gone. There wasn't even a single coin left in his money bag. He had wasted it all on parties and clothes and having fun. But now, with no more money, there would be no more parties and no more clothes and no more fun. The son didn't even have enough money left to buy food. There would be no more food now because he had spent all his money. And so the son, he began to starve. And he wasn't so happy anymore. And so one day, the son went to a local farmer and he begged the farmer for a job. And the farmer hired him and sent him out in the field to feed the pigs. 
Well, the son, he worked very hard for that farmer, but the farmer didn't give him anything to eat. So the son was so hungry that even the icky, sloppy pig food began to look good to him. Finally, one day, the son decided, maybe home isn't so bad after all. He knew that he was empty inside, that he had nothing left. And he thought to himself, at home, even my father's servants have enough clothes and they have more than enough food to eat while I'm here dying of hunger. So the son knew that he couldn't make it on his own. He thought, I'm going to go home to my father. And so the son, he sat at home knowing that he had treated his father badly, and he knew that he had treated God badly, too. He knew that he was wrong for the way that he had acted. And while the son was still a long way away, his father saw him coming from the distance, and the father was so excited to see him. And the father was filled with love and compassion, and he ran to the son, and he hugged him, and he kissed him. And the son said, Dad, I'm really sorry that I have sinned against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And what did the dad do? He forgave his son and then he threw a great party. The father served the best food and he gave the son the finest clothes. And everyone sang and everyone celebrated. So the son thought that money was going to make him happy, and he went out into the world searching for all kinds of things to make him happy, and they didn't make him happy. You know, the son in the story is a lot like we are, and the father in the story is a lot like God. And the father loved the son when the son lived at home, and he loved the son when he moved far away. And the father loved the son when he was making good choices, and the father loved the son when he was making bad choices. And the father knew that the son was not going to be happy by the things in life, that they just don't last. He wanted his son to have a special kind of happiness, that the happiness that comes from being in relationship with the father. That's just like us boys and girls, that when we're poor in spirit, when we recognize that we have nothing left, there's no goodness in us, and when we know that we need to ask God for forgiveness, we do, and he begins to fill us up with the good things of life. So Jesus said to his disciples in the large crowd that day, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's what Jesus wants us to have, the happiness inside, that no matter what's happening on the outside, we can still be happy because the kingdom of heaven is ours. So boys and girls, we're going to pray now. If you would close your eyes with me. God, we thank you that you sent Jesus that tells us the truth about how we can have happiness. And happiness doesn't come from toys and cereal, and it doesn't come from money in our piggy bank, and it doesn't come from great presents or parties or fancy clothes. But Lord, the kind of happiness that we have inside that you give us, that lasts forever. And no matter what's happening around us, we can still have joy and happiness because you bless us when we come to you and tell, us that, tell you that we need you. Thank you for your love, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, if you liked my smiley face, that's one of the crafts that you can make this week. And there are some other things, Mom and Dan, you can check out our website for some crafts. And so, boys and girls, I have just one more thing that I want to say to you this morning, and I think you might know what it is. So I'm going to say it once, and then I want you to repeat after me. So God loves you. This time when I say you, I want you to point to yourself and say me. God loves you. We'll see you next time, boys and girls. Have a great week. Bye.